Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Please have a seat. It is Porush. Yes, sir. You are welcome. And uh, you find that you completed your M Tech, B Tech in 2020. And you have been software engineer with uh, Texas Instruments. Okay, Bangalore. Great. Uh, which attempt it is? So this is my second attempt. Second and personality test? First. First. We could start from your side, uh, Mr. Bhartwa. Yes. You have done from mathematics. Uh, my optional is mathematics. But the India is as an inflection point. Now there is a worldwide concern on the aging, aging population. Okay. So that's a demographic angle. Zone. There are four Ds actually. Yeah, another we are talking about digitalization. And digitalization, you are talking disruptive digitalization. So it's happening in the, uh, what do you think that where India stands in these kind of problems which world is facing, Johan? Um, sir, India is uh, stands at a more resilient position right now. Uh, with respect to aging, uh, India does not have this, pop, uh, this problem at least for the next 20 to 30 years. And uh, India has the largest youth population among any country in the world. So India does stand to gain from the demographic dividend. Uh, apart from that, in, in terms of digitization, uh, I think India is, uh, uh, is doing really well in, in this sphere as well. Um, with the, uh, a lot of governance initiatives also taken uh, in the di direction of digitization. Our United Payments Interface, uh, UPI, is, is a, a model for the rest of the world to follow. So why we are lagging behind in the, we are good in software, Joe. In the hardware, what is, what is the difficulty? We have got such bright people. Sir, I think in the hardware, it's mostly an infrastructural related issue, um, um, especially when we talk about electronic hardware and semiconductor design. It requires a, a, a very uh, good level of infrastructure in terms of water supply, power supply, supply of raw materials like uh, some uh, rare earths and uh, chemicals as well, uh, in which India is import dependent. So I think these are some of the structural issues in our... So in your view, do you think that we did not have the resources or we lag behind in seeing the opportunity which is coming? Uh, sir, I think we, we do have the resources. And uh, we uh, and India at, at present is at a stage where it can actually invest in uh, these uh, technologies, hardware uh, design, semiconductor design, and uh, move ahead. Move ahead, Joe. Have we taken some measures now in the context of semiconductor China and Taiwan problem? Have we taken some measures on that? Uh, yes, sir. So I think uh, the uh, the COVID nineteen pandemic uh, uh, and the shortage of semiconductors from China did. Uh, uh, make us realize that it is high time that uh, we need to uh, improve the semiconductor design manufacturing in our country. And we have taken some steps like the design linked initiative for uh, semiconductor design and uh, th there have been some uh, talks of a plant coming up in Gujarat for semiconductor manufacturing as well. That's slightly different on the, now budget is round the corner. So what are your wish list on the direct tax and indirect tax which uh, Madam Finance Minister calls you and says, please advise us that. What do you want? Um, sir, with respect to indirect taxes, I think there should be a, a little more rationalization of uh, the slabs. Uh, right now, we have a lot of different slabs. and uh, How many? Uh, I think we have four major slabs, but apart from that, gold and diamonds have their own uh, um, slabs as well. Uh, so, uh, some sort of uh, rationalization is necessary here. Um, in terms of direct taxes, I think uh, a direct tax code uh, is is uh, the the way forward here, uh, because uh, sometimes uh, even even for me I, personally, I, I found the filing income tax and so on was very difficult for me as well. So uh, I think uh, uh, there should be a little more of uh, consumer friendliness and uh, a direct tax. You will be filing a ITR income tax return. Yes. So for how many years uh, one has to require, one is required to maintain the ITR? Is there any time limit prescribed? There is. There was something related to this in the last year's budget where uh, you could edit your uh, tax returns. No, I am asking that how long you need to keep the ITR. Is there a provision in law which says that? I am not aware of that. You are not aware of that. How far back the in IT can go back and ask you that uh, in the year assessment year this is wrong. That some time limit is there or they can open some 50 years, 40 years, 30 years back. I filed ITR and they can call today. Please give this detail. You, you sold a house in Lucknow sometime 25 years back. 
so can they open like that sir i'm not sure but i think they cannot uh, there should be a time limit uh, <laughs> yeah. yes, there is a time limit for issuing of so called notices a varying time limits on that jo hai okay thank you very much kurosh india is a gastronomic delight yes. explain oh uh, ma'am india has uh, every state of india has its own cuisine every district of india has its own cuisine and uh, uh the spices and the ingredients that we see here are uh, not found in a lot of places around the world uh and i think the varying cuisines of india makes it a gastronomic delight so what are you doing as a hobby in gastronomy uh ma'am i like to uh, uh look at how maybe as the same ingredient is used in a lot of different cuisines and around the world and uh, uh, also i i do like to cook at times in india which are the say name three states which are a popular destination for gastronomic purposes uh ma'am telangana is definitely a state hyderabad is also a, a part of the united nations creative cities network on gastronomy uh so i think uh, hyderabad offers a mix of uh, both uh, uh, uh kind of uh, uh, mughlai cuisine as well as uh, south indian cuisine apart from that i'd like to say kolkata uh because that has an influence of not only the uh, west bengal but also uh, a slight chinese influence and northeastern influence as well and the third i'd like to say is delhi uh <laughs> because uh, delhi also has a good fusion cuisine and uh, uh, uh not just uh, the influence of mughlai but also tibetan and uh, korean influence as well which foreign cuisine you like ma'am i really enjoy thai cuisine what is topology mathematics uh ma'am topology is the uh branch of mathematics which uh, deals with the uh, uh, giving algebraic representations to uh, uh manifolds and uh, uh, shapes basically what are the uses what is it used to i'm not uh, very aware ma'am okay or well, it doesn't matter now henry wooten said an ambassador is an honest man sent abroad to lie an intrigue for the benefit of his country you were given foreign service as your number one so in relation to that just tell me what do you think this statement means uh ma'am true is it i think it's partially true that uh, an an ambassador or a diplomat uh, in in a foreign country has to make sure that their own in, the their their, their country, home country's interests are uh, represented well and uh, also i think uh, with respect to the intrigue part i think uh, it is important for uh, an ambassador to uh, to to spread some sort of a cultural diplomacy in a in a foreign country uh, and at the same time create a sort of an intrigue in, intrigue in the uh, eyes of the country so that uh, you know not only tourism is benefited but people to people ties and so on are also encouraged what about if you are posted in a country that is openly hostile to india where would intrigue come there ma'am maybe uh, uh, in in a sort of uh, way that uh, uh, to to show that india is is definitely a lot more capable uh, to tackle all the hostilities uh, that have been uh, meted to by that country and a sort of like like a, a, a secrecy uh, kind of an intrigue maybe uh, but i'm not <laughs> supposing you're posted in a mission abroad and you are designated as first secretary commercial and economic what do you think you have to do if if i'm posted as the first secretary commercial that then i think my primary uh, motive would be to uh, improve uh, trade and tourism ties naturally anything that benefits india economically, economically and helps in its development so how would you do it what are the tools that would be available there abroad for you in a mission uh ma'am i think one would be uh, some sort of a cultural uh, uh, diplomacy of showcasing indian heritage and products uh, uh in 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 uh, say events uh, that take place in that country like what events uh ma'am there are some events in which uh, uh, there'll be uh, some sort of exchange uh, cultural exchange events and not cultural you're talking of commerce no so what events would you see that india participated in over there Ma'am, maybe the bilateral uh, talks or events, uh, inter- trade shows, right? Expos. You will participate in international one. Make sure that after doing a study first, whether it is useful for India too, when you do the product choice, like what are the products, 
that could you know maybe. so there are many there are a whole uh, lot of uh, issues in it now what is uh, eno uh, eno ma'am i n o i'm not sure ma'am indian neutrino observatory what is it? it it's going to come up in tamil nadu i think was supposed to it is stalled in the, but what does it deal with uh, ma'am it deals with the uh, the detection of uh, neutrinos which are chargeless particles and they do not interact uh, uh, much with any other particles of the universe which makes them more difficult to capture but uh, they are used full in uh, say cryptography and so now tell me what are the challenges and opportunities for india in 2023 the international front Mom, can I have a moment to think? And domestically, because they impinge, you know, they do impact. Ma'am, the foremost uh, challenge that I think is the economic challenge that is coming up, especially in terms of our exports. Uh, we see that there is a global uh, slowdown and uh, uh, talks of recession in the Western countries. So they might uh, hamper our export growth uh, in twenty twenty three. So I think that is a, a major challenge for India. Secondly, uh, India is placed at a very sensitive position in the. current uh, geopolitical scenario uh, uh, where uh, it, there is a lot of uncertainty due to the russia ukraine war uh, there is uncertainty in um, in in oil prices uh, there are talks of caps on the price of uh, russia oil which has already been done uh, so i think uh, uh, in terms of uh, oil as well india will have to uh, face uh, certain issues uh, thirdly i would like to say that uh, india is the uh, president of uh, g20 right now and uh, it it is its turn to uh, charter the global uh, path ahead so uh, india has to very carefully tread on that path as well uh, in 2023 but there would be opportunities also no in that uh, what about the threats to india's security china right now yes, yes it would be one of the yeah uh, how do you think uh, india will manage that uh ma'am i think uh, india should uh, adopt a diplomatic route but if there is a, some sort of an unprovoked aggression by china as was seen in uh, last year then um, it should definitely respond with all its might uh, back okay thank you you are a software engineer and your preference is indian foreign service yes sir so i'm not able to understand the linkage between the three um sir uh, my hobby is teaching which i which i really like to do at times uh, uh my uh, job was uh, uh, i was i was working as a software engineer uh, but uh, i am currently on a sabbatical to for my preparation uh, apart from that i think uh, uh, indian foreign services is is is, a, is is what i want to make out of my future career uh, it, it's what i see in in, in my uh, future uh, and the other two i would like to say keep as my hobbies only so why do you want to go for ifs um sir i think the kind of uh, environment that i'll be exposed to in 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 uh, the indian foreign service not just in diplomatic missions abroad but also in policy making within the country uh, will be unparalleled and uh, uh, it it's mostly what i what i see as what i can gain from uh, from this service um because uh, not just what i can gain but also what i can give back because uh, they say that diplomacy is the first line of defense and uh, as we are growing uh, closer as a as a world i think this will play a much imp- more important role in the next coming decades what is the relationship between the left and governor of delhi and the chief minister in terms of constitutional provisions sir in terms of uh, constitutional provisions uh, the article 239 uh, a uh, a a is uh, what uh, talks about the national capital territory of delhi where the lieutenant governor has to act on the aid and advice of the chief minister but that is not happening uh, yes sir so there was the uh, uh, gntcd act of uh, amendment act of 2021 where the uh, government the government was uh, named uh, as the lieutenant governor uh, which is why that is not happening which are the areas or subjects where delhi government has no power uh sir it's uh, land public order and police but then why is the friction um sir the friction primarily is because of the recent amendment that was brought in um and also because the uh, uh political parties at the st- uh, st- uh, at the nct level and the central level are uh, are are uh, different whom do you blame more sir i think i would not like to blame anyone more but i would like to say that both parties are to blame because ultimately it's the people of delhi who are at loss tell me some discretionary power of the governor 
सर गवर्नर्स हैव बोथ कॉन्स्टिट्यूशनल एज वेल एज सिचुएशनल डिस्क्रिप्शन इन टर्म्स ऑफ सिचुएशनल डिस्क्रिप्शन द गवर्नर कैन रेफर सम बिल्स टू द प्रेजिडेंट फॉर रिकन्सिडरेशन सेकेंडली इन टर्म्स ऑफ सिचुएशनल डिस्क्रिप्शन वैन देर इज नो पार्टी इन मेजोरिटी देन दे हैव द डिस्क्रिप्शन ऑफ चूजिंग द चीफ मिनिस्टर एंड सो ऑन सर अपार्ट फ्रॉम दिस द गवर्नर हैज ऑल्सो डिस्क्रिप्शनरी पावर्स इन इन द अफेयर्स ऑफ यूनियन टेरिटरी इफ दे आर एक्टिंग एज द एडमिनिस्ट्रेटर ऑफ दैट यूनियन टेरिटरी इरिस्पेक्टिव ऑफ द स्टेट इन विच दे आर द गवर्नर there were certain recommendations which were made by sarkariya commission can you enumerate some of them uh, sir uh, from what i can remember i think uh, the sarkariya commission recommended that there should be a fixed term for the governor of 5 years and secondly the chief minister of the state should be consulted uh, in the appointment of the governor and i think one more was that the governor uh, should be done away with from being the chancellor of universities but i'm not sure if that was a part of sarkaria what kind of person should be appointed as governor what was their recommendation sir a non partisan uh, 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 individual who is not from the uh, state in which they are going to be appointed as the governor that is one what about politician um sir i think uh, politicians uh, it recommend that politicians should not be um, appointed as governor they should be more independent but i am not sure on this exactly what are non communicable diseases sir non communicable diseases are those diseases which uh, cannot uh, spread from uh, one person to another uh, in in fr- through air or water or so on uh, for example um, diabetes or uh, high blood pressure or so on india is known to be diabetic capital of the world what what do you think about it is it correct or what is the reason sir definitely there is a very high incidence of diabetes in 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 the country but i am not aware of the exact reason for why that is why did we go for unitary bias in our constitution um sir at the time of independence uh, the indian um, states had uh, there was a huge task of uh, uh, making the country more cohesive uh, because of the issue of princely states integration and so on so i think at that time there was a, a, a valid uh, reason to make it make a have a unitary bias what is the use of caste census sir i think a lot of our policies are uh, especially the positive affirmation policies are uh, based on uh, the concept of caste so i think a, a caste based census would help us in having a more data oriented and data backed policy making in this regard some um, move in 2019 and then it was taken data protection bill was introduced and then they have now a new draft what is the idea behind that sir uh, the there was a uh, the a judgment called ks puttu swami judgment by the supreme court uh, which uh, which uh, said that a right to privacy is a fundamental right so to bring that in uh, law okay icj Uh, india and pakistan they, uh, whenever they go there there is a that issue of jurisdiction uh, in the atlantic case which was filed by pakistan india raised jurisdiction and then in the constitution what why what is the basis for uh, raising objections to that jurisdiction sir i am not aware of this okay. uh then can you tell us why if you are to take up the case of India being a permanent member and the expansion of the Supreme uh, uh, Security Council, what would be your uh, argument? Sir, my first and foremost argument would be that India is soon to become the world's most populous country, and uh, uh, not having uh, the most populous country itself having a representation in the United Nations Council, a country which hosts around twenty percent of the world's population. uh it, it 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 really talks it it really shows how uh, that that uh, unsc is becoming obsolete now uh secondly uh, india has emerged as the world's fifth largest economy and it is also the voice of the global south so to speak so to have more representation of developing countries in the global south is very important in in the united nations security to begin with uh, do you think uh, united nations was Uh, supposed to be a democratic uh, organization because it uh, was for friendly nations they used this term sir i think some uh, some organs of the un like the united nations general assembly and so on they work on democratic principles but uh, certain like united nations security council does not okay thank you
there is a test introduced C U E T and it is supposed to promote what they call critical thinking, discussion based uh, learning and uh, inquiry driven education and selection obviously. Whether it will uh, succeed in that direction it is already introduced and um, sir, I think the CUET will definitely usher in more transparency in the selection process. Please tell me in respect of these three things. Critical thinking and uh, inquiry based learning and uh, there is uh, discussion oriented learning. Sir, maybe the, I am not fully aware of this issue but maybe the test is based on um, those aspects of. It is uh, based on multiple choice questions, MCQ. Yeah, sir, but I think multiple choice questions can also uh, 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 have be a good test of uh, critical thinking. The, the problem is that there are so many students, uh, uh, so, so many applicants that it cannot be, it's not feasible to uh, have more exhaustive subjective tests for the students. So, I think this was the best way out. So, this is only a compromise you mean to say? I would say yes, because in, in, in because uh, uh, if in, in an ideal scenario, we would w like to test on multiple holistic parameters, not just uh, uh, the based on a test result, but also subjective parameters as well as personality. And uh, generally about the recommendations of uh, new education policy, uh, which are major, major recommendations, uh, which will help learning, you know, quality education in India, only quality education. Sir, one is the uh, promotion of uh, education in mother tongue. Um, at least up to the class 8 because secondly I think the uh, focus on pre-primary education um, will also be another one. Uh, thirdly I think the uh, recent UGC guidelines on uh, foreign universities and so on. It does not help much. Substantive issues in education policy which have a direct bearing on quality. So, the assessment framework is another one for not just teacher. What about filling up of uh, teachers post, a large number of posts in uh, best institutions lie vacant, even your IIT not all will be full. So, <coughs> does it uh, does it suggest some way out? Sir, I am not aware of. Uh, okay. Why these posts are not being filled up? Sir, I uh, will have to think a little bit, but what I can say is that uh, uh, Probably because of uh, uh, dearth of uh, talent in, in the country. Dearth of talent or the poor, uh, bright people not coming forward for teaching jobs? Not coming that. from teaching jobs and if, if at all then going abroad. Okay, but whoever are available to us as teachers, why don't we, uh, why are not we able to improve their uh, uh, standard and teaching abilities? Sir, definitely there is an issue of uh, funding in the education sector. The abilities of those teachers who are already available in the institute. Yes, yeah, sir, because we need to have uh, some sort of a continuing education or some training given to teachers as well uh, and uh, make them more skilled in the… Uh, funding comes in the way. Let us talk about central universities and institutions of national importance. Yes, yeah, sir, probably there uh, funding uh, is… No, it doesn't come into picture. The, we want it to be taking place, but uh, why it is not taking place? Because uh, you have trainers, you have trainees, you can do within the institution or outside the institution. Just think about it, okay? So, uh, we end your uh, mock interview. Take care, all the best. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon to never miss an update.